Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and welcome to another recent reads in front of my Christmas tree. So I am going to talk about the next 10 books that I have read. If you have not seen previous recent reads that I have done on my channel, I will link the playlist down below so you can see me talk about all the books that I have read throughout 2019. And in this video, we're going to talk about my 81st read to my 90th read. We're almost to 100 books. I don't know how that happened this year, but I guess I was just a reading machine. So let's just get right into it. So the first book that I want to talk about is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. This is a classic horror book that I listen to on audiobook and I listen to it mainly because I adore The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. So The Haunting of Hill House is about a group of people who go to Hill House, which is a renowned haunted mansion that has been abandoned for years and years. And a woman named Theo, a woman named Eleanor, and Luke, who is one of the heirs to Hill House, is invited to stay in the mansion for a couple of days with this doctor who is studying the mansion. So while they are staying at the mansion, a bunch of weird happenings occur. There are knockings on the wall, the doors shake, the doors open and close without abandon and it's very difficult to walk through the mansion because it almost seems like it's changing with every twist and turn that you take when you're walking through Hill House. So while I did enjoy the audiobook, I really enjoyed how it was narrated and I enjoyed the writing overall, I do have to say that The Haunting of Hill House, the Netflix show, does such a wonderful job taking the bare bones of this story and turning it into a complex storyline that is much different from the book. I feel like the book lacked a real plot. I wish we learned more about Hill House itself and why it's haunted. I wish we learned more about the hauntings and the ghosts that are staying in Hill House because I feel like the novel itself was mostly just centered around the scariness of Hill House and the brief stay that these characters had in the home itself. Meanwhile, the show has such a complex plot. There's a lot of character development. It explores Theo, Eleanor, Luke, and all these other characters that the director created for the show and I feel like the show is so much better than the book because the book was just very bare bones. It didn't have a lot to it and I wish it did have more because I saw the show first and then I read the book and I can just say that the show is much better than the book in my opinion. So the next book that I read was phenomenal and it was The Red Umbrella by Cristina Diaz Gonzalez. This is a story about the Peter Pan movement in Cuba. So many people don't know about this piece of history, but when the Cuban Revolution occurred, a bunch of parents decided to risk everything that they have to send their children to America alone. They wanted to give their children a new life in America where they are free, where they're not being ruled by Castro. So they sent their children to America where these churches and these people volunteered to take care of these Cuban children until hopefully everything cools down in Cuba and maybe they can return. And I really enjoyed this novel because it is a fictionalized tale about the Peter Pan movement in Cuba. And it follows a girl and a boy who were sent to America after the Cuban Revolution. And it follows them before they were sent to America and then it follows them after they're sent to America. So you get to see their contrasting lives because in Cuba they lived such a lavish lifestyle and in America it's much more different because they don't know English that well and they don't know the American and customs so they're very much othered once they're in America and I really enjoyed this novel because it highlights a piece of Cuban history that not a lot of people know about and one of my neighbors is actually a person who was a part of the Peter Pan movement so it just really opened my eyes to a piece of history that I previously didn't know that much about and I think it's a very important novel for Cuban history and Latinx history itself and it was so well done it's a much younger young adult type of novel I believe the main character is 14 and it was just so well done. I also read it in one sitting because it was so short and the writing is much more simplistic than other YA novels and it reads kind of like a middle grade into young adult novel. So I would highly recommend this novel if you want to learn about another piece of Cuban history or if you want a Latinx historical fiction to read. The next book was provided to me by the publisher so thank you so much to FSG Books and they provided me with a copy of Find Me. Find Me is the highlight 
highly anticipated sequel to Call Me By Your Name and this follows the characters much later in their life and it follows three points of views. It follows Elio, it follows Oliver, and it follows Elio's dad, Samuel. And I feel like this book fell very flat for me. I wrote an entire review about it if you want to see it and it's over on my website which I will link down below so you can see my full review. But it fell very flat for me because I was not interested in Elio and Oliver's story. In fact, I only really cared about Elio's father's story and his romance that he had after the events of Call Me By Your Name. So once Samuel's point of view was wrapped up and we went into Elio and Oliver's point of view, I just felt myself kind of get lost and not in a good way. I feel like I didn't really care about Elio and Oliver's story and I feel like their relationship just really changed in this book and it felt like there was no chemistry. It just felt like they didn't belong together and they just didn't seem like a right fit for each other in this book. The first book was wonderful. I feel like it should have just ended off that way and I feel like the sequel wasn't really needed. It was cool to explore Samuel's life but it just did not capture me the way that Caught Me By Your Name did. So this was sadly a disappointment for me. Another book that I feel like didn't really need a sequel was Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. I think I said in my Goodreads review that this feels much more like a filler book. It's a very short book compared to Carry On which is the first book in the series following a boy named Simon who has magical abilities and he's fighting against villains and he's also enemies with a boy named Baz who is a vampire. But over time they do fall in love with each other and this explores their time after the first book, after they defeated the villain, after they are considered heroes. It explores what happens to Simon now that he's considered a hero but he doesn't have his powers anymore and he kind of just feels stagnant in life because he doesn't have a particular place in life because once you're the hero and you save the day now what do you do? And I think that was a really cool topic to explore and it's really fleshed out in this novel but I feel like the book was just a filler because it's just about the shenanigans that Simon, Baz, and Penny get up to and I just wasn't really that interested in the novel itself. It was entertaining in some aspects and some chapters but the whole book overall just didn't hold my attention the way that Carry On did, sadly. The next book I read I took out from my library on audiobook and it was The Killer of Across the Table by John E. Douglas and it was narrated by none other than Groff Sauce from Mindhunter who plays Holden in Mindhunter on Netflix. This was a very interesting read because it explores John E. Douglas dealing with four different cases throughout his career after creating and working with the behavioral science unit. So it follows four very distinct cases that are very different from each other and explores how these killers' minds sets can be so different and the way that they commit their crimes are so different. I do have to say I loved the first two cases but the last two cases I wasn't that interested in. The first two cases were much more interesting and intricate than the last two cases but I do have to say that Groff Sauce narrating this novel was so good because it just felt like a Mindhunter episode playing for hours and hours. He narrates books so well and I feel like he should narrate more books in the future because his voice is so soothing and so calm and it just really fit this book because he plays the main character in Mindhunter so I feel like him narrating John E. Douglas's books was such a wonderful fit and that really made the audiobook that much more enjoyable. Like I said before the first half was much more interesting than the second half which tends to happen a lot in books. I feel like there's always a strong start but once you get to the middle and once you get to the end then it starts slipping down and I feel like the author loses their ability to hold our attention which is what happened with The Killer Across the Table. And the next nonfiction that I enjoyed was Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered, and it's by Karen Gilguera and Georgia Hartstark. And they are the co-founders of My Favorite Murder, which is a wonderful, hilarious, comedic slash true crime podcast that I can't stop listening to. So this chronicles different parts in their life and the different life lessons that they learned, and it's just sharing pieces of their life to their readers and to their listeners and they have gone through so much in their life. I give them so much kudos for just rising above all the circumstances that they went through and this novel was just such a treat to listen to because they both narrate their different chapters and you just get to learn more about their lives. I feel like if you don't listen to their podcast you would not give two shits about this book because it's very much 
only for the readers and listeners who really care about Karen and Georgia themselves. So if you're looking for some true crime stories because they do do a true crime podcast, this isn't the book for you. This is much more about their lives. And I also learned some really important life lessons through their work. They just taught me some important things to remember as an adult and I really enjoyed that. And it was just a really fun audiobook to listen to that you could finish really quickly because it's a really short book. The next book I read was actually a book I was very iffy about. In the beginning, I was kind of disappointed because I feel like it didn't follow the synopsis of the book, but once I got towards the end of the book, it completely won me over and made this almost one of my favorite books of the year. And it is The End of Loneliness by Benedict Wells. This is a book that I originally started reading physically, but I was kind of in a book slump, so I decided to take it out from my library on audiobook, and I feel like that's what really saved the book for me. I was not in the mood to read it physically, so listening to it was much more enjoyable to me, and it, this follows the story of these three siblings who lose their parents very early on in their childhood, so they have to learn how to live their life without their parents when they are these young teenagers just trying to understand understand life and understand their place in life and it also explores how they each grieve in a different way. One brother just lives a very straight and narrow life and is kind of just plain and boring and he doesn't really feel fulfilled. The sister in the novel is very rambunctious and very wild and is unable to be settled down because she doesn't process her parents loss that well. And then we have the main character who doesn't feel like he has a place in the world and he is pining over Alva who is a girl that he was best friends with in school and then they had a falling out and then he's hoping that someday down the road they can end up together. So this literary fiction really explores grief, it explores just growing up and growing older, it explores family and it explores like second chance romance. It's very much like a little life. It explores characters from their teenage college life all the way up to their adulthood and I think that's really cool. I feel like only certain authors can do it well. Exploring a large chunk of someone's life is very difficult to do because there are ups and downs and there are different circumstances that happen and different troubles that arise at certain ages and this did that wonderfully. It also explored grief in a subtle way that kind of just rose and rose towards the end and I was listening to this audiobook one night in bed and I was just straight up sobbing for a solid hour just listening to this book because the way that grief is explored was just so hard-hitting and so relatable and was so real and raw that it just completely like overwhelmed my emotions. I just enjoyed this novel so much and I also want to say this is translated from German so if you're looking for a translated book that you want to read this one was wonderful. The audiobook is also wonderful as well. The next book I read was Luck on the Line. This is a romance following a woman who is kind of forced to work on her mother's opening of her restaurant because her mother just kind of left right before the restaurant was going to open so the daughter has to take over and just reel in everything and try and make it the best opening as possible and while she is doing that she is also forced to work alongside with the restaurant's chef and he very much does not like her so they are forced to put aside their differences and work together on this restaurant's opening and while I really wanted to enjoy this book because I love enemies to lovers and I love when characters are forced to work in really close settings especially Especially when attentions are high. I feel like the chemistry wasn't really there between the two characters and I feel like the storyline itself just wasn't that interesting. While the premise does sound interesting, it just left me disappointed. The premise was cool but it it just didn't hit the way I wanted it to. The 89th book that I read this year was The Bear and the Nightingale and I listened to this on audiobook. I feel like because I'm not a big fantasy reader, I could only really listen to them on audiobook and retain my attention onto the story because whenever I read fantasy books physically, I just cannot get through them. I just don't have like the attention span. So I listened to The Bear and the Nightingale on audiobook. This is about a village where there are a bunch of magical happenings and the main character 
Bessie Lisa, her mother dies when she is just a child, so her father marries a new woman who does not allow them to do the traditions and rituals that they do to work with and please the spirits in their village. So once they aren't allowed to do that, all these spirits and all these different creatures start getting angry at the village and they start taking out their anger on the village. And it explores Vasilisa as she grows older and it also explores her meeting, I think he's like the embodiment of winter, so like Jack Frost. And they have to try and ward off these evil spirits that are trying to take over the village. And while I did enjoy this audiobook because it reads and just flows like a beautiful fairy tale, I feel like this story was the foundation for this series. The plot wasn't really there for me. I feel like it only really picked up towards the end of the novel and that's when I was really interested and that's when the story ended. So I have to read the second book because I do want to know what happens next to Vasilisa and the and the god of winter and I want to know what happens to her family. I didn't feel like there was a lot of plot development. It just felt like it was introducing the plot to me. So I'm not gonna say this was a terrible book. It was so beautifully written but I do have to say that I wish there was more to this story but I am going to be reading the second book because I have to know what's gonna happen next and I feel like this first book was just a build-up and the second book is going to be explosive. So the 90th book that I read was The Air You Breathe and it, this is about two girls who live on a plantation together. One is the daughter of the owner of the plantation and the other is Doris who is one of the servants on the plantation. It explores their childhood together. They are childhood friends but there's always a power dynamic in their friendship and Doris is always on the bottom because she is a servant to Gracia. And they end up moving together to the Lapa neighborhood in Brazil where it is full of music, it's full of vibrancy, it's full of creativity, and they both want to become musicians. Gracia wants to be a well-renowned singer, and Dora's explores over time that she is really good at writing music for Gracia. So as they grow older together, they become so well known around the world. Gracia becomes a worldwide known singer who is very successful and Doris is always on the sideline and she is always watching her best friend succeed and she's never getting the recognition for the work that she also puts in to help Gracia succeed. While this book was really interesting, I do have to say I did not enjoy this book solely based on the fact that Gracia was a terrible person to Doris. No matter what stage in her life they are in, Gracia was always just demeaning and mean and ungrateful to her best friend who is doing everything that she can to make her be successful. So while I did enjoy this historical fiction relaying the life of Doris and Gracia and all their friends and the band that they had together, I could not find one single aspect of Gracia's personality that I enjoyed because she was just a terrible, vindictive, and emotionally abusive person and that wasn't okay. And I feel like towards the end of the novel, Doris was like, oh well, Gracia was my best friend throughout my whole entire life, so while she does have her faults, she's still a good friend. And I'm just like, no girl, like she was a terrible person to you. You have to recognize that and just come to terms with the fact that you had a terrible friend. It just made me really sad that Doris just let that treatment slide and it makes me sad that, that there are probably people out there who have friends like that who are so mean and who always put them at the lowest rung. It just really made me sad in general. So those are the next 10 books that I have read. I hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about the books that I have read recently and I will be sure to link any review that I have for these books down below if you want to read them. Also be sure to follow my Instagram if you want to see what I'm currently reading. I always post what I am reading on this there if you want to see what I'm reading in real time. If you have not subscribed already, be sure to do so to support me and see more of my videos, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Bye!